we need something to understand. There is something called the gradient slope of a straight line. If now you got it several points and then you join those points, you will form a straight line. Joining the what? The points. Definitely you form what we call it a straight line. Now, and that's a straight line, it must have a slope. And now, how do we determine a slope of a straight line? It is something very important for you to understand it. This is a straight line of that I've drawn here. It has got several points. Maybe the first point was here. They say the other point is here. The other point is here. The other point is here. Other point is there. Now, joining those points, you must form what we call it a, a straight line. You got it? Now, we are discussing about a straight line because we have curved line and so forth. But according to the syllabus now, we definitely need to talk about it. Straight what? Line. Gradient or slope of a straight line is the length of the change in y to the change in x. What is change in y? And what is change in x? Remember, consider this is y axis. Consider this diagram. And this is the x axis. Now, if now I've drawn this line, this is the line that I've drawn. I want to determine the slope. Now, I draw the other line, dotted line, like this one, to form a triangle. Right angle D, triangle. If that is the case, my intention is to determine what is the change in Y and what is the change in X. Definitely from here, the change in Y is located along the vertical axis. And the change in X is located along the, the act X axis. From here, I can determine this using this line and this point. Now, let me draw line to the axis, X axis. And this is the second point. Now, this is X1 and this is X2. Now, the same apply this one. And here it is. Now this is the y1 and this is y2. Now when I change it, I say change in y, I mean of y2 minus what? Y1. And when I say change in x, I mean of x2 minus x1. One. And therefore from here, the gradient is the relation of the change in y to the change in x. Means what? If now you want to determine slope, slope should be equal. M should be equal now to change in Y over change in X. But remember, change in Y is equal to Y2 minus Y1. One. And change in X is equal to X2 minus X1. Now, slope definitely is presented by what? By M. And therefore we say slope is equal to Y2 minus Y1 y over X2 minus X1. This is a formula that definitely can be used to determine the slope. Now, example. Find the gradients of the lines joining the following points. A, you have 2,4 and 6,8. B, you have negative 4, comma, negative 7 and negative 1, comma, negative 9. C, you have 2,5 and 1,4. These are the points that you've been given. You need now to find the gradient. A is 2,4 and B, I, I mean 6,8. This is point A. Now from here, you have X. It is 2,4. And then you have 6,8. This is the X and this is the X. This is the Y and this is the Y. You can decide which one you think it is x1. If now you decide this is x1, this is x2. If now you decide this is y1, this is y2. Now let me decide this is x1 and this is x2. This is y1 and this is y2. It is my decision. The answer will be the same even if you choose this is x1 and this is x2. This is y1, this is y2. Now, Slope from slope 
is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But y2 is equal to what? 8. y1 is equal to what? 4. Over x2 is what? 6. Minus x1, which is equal to 2. Now, is equal now to 4 over 4. Now, if that is the case, 4 over 1 over 4 is what? Now, gradient is equal to 1. Therefore, you conclude by saying, slow represented by m is equal now to 1. Done. What is important to understand? What is different with the format used to, to apply or to, 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 to calculate a gradient? This is the way we do it. So in short, slope is equal to change in y over change in x. But change in y is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I have substituted what I'm given. Now you just label this is x and this is x. This is y and this is y. But you decide this is x1, this is x2. This is y1, this is y2. So there is a point that you can decide on how to do it. Have I made myself clear? Now B, B is in negative 4, comma negative 7. And B, negative 1, comma negative 9. Now let us talk about this one. This is the X and this is Y. This is the X and this is the Y. Now this is the, let us say this is the X1, this is the X2. This is Y1, this is Y2. Don't confuse. If now you decide this is x1, this must be y1. Don't confuse. Don't say this is x1 and this is x2. Then here you say y1, then here y2. No, 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 no. If now you decide to choose this is the first point to me, you call this is x1 and this is y2, y, y1. And if now you decide this is my second point, now you must label this is x2 and this is y2. Means x2 and y2 must be at the same point, at the point. Must make the point. You got my point? Now, in short, m is equal to change in y, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But remember, y2 is what? Negative 7. Don't forget to write those integers. And I told you, what is most important in learning mathematics? Integers and algebra. Those are the key things in mathematics. Key talk is in Because you won't understand nothing if you know nothing about integers. And you won't solve any algebraic equation if you know nothing about integers. So these things are very important in learning mathematics. So you've got to be careful. Now, if that's the case, now y2 is negative 7. Now you put it in bracket. Minus. Then you have y1. That is negative 9. Then over. Then you have x2 is negative 4 minus x1 is negative 1. That is the principle. Mathematically, what we can do here, negative 7 means we need to remain with a single sign here. So we must write those integers. Negative times negative. Now, then we have negative 7, positive what? 9 over. Then negative times negative is what? Positive. Now we have negative 4, positive what? 1. So mathematical, negative 7, positive 9. And answer is equal to what? Positive 2. Then negative 4, positive 1. Answer is what? Negative 3. Now 2 over 3, 2 over negative 3. Now slope is equal to negative 2 over 3. Definitely you conclude by saying, Slope of the line should be equal to negative 2 or what? Over 3. This is what you can do. Now let us see the last example. Is 2 comma 5 and 1 comma 4. We get that point. Now this is x1, this is x2. This is y1, this is y2. Now remember, slope is equal to change in y over change in what? x. Which is equal to y2 minus y1. Over x2 minus x1. What now? Which is equal now? Y2 is 4. Minus y1 is 5. Over x2 is 1. Now, minus x1, it is 22. Now, 
is equal now 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 1. 1 minus negative minus 2 is negative 40. Negative 1. Negative over negative is what? Positive. Now is equal to positive 40? 1. Now our slope is equal to positive 1. Therefore, we may conclude by saying now slope m is given as 1. So that is how we determine the slope. Determine the slope, you have to know the point that slope is equal to changing y over changing x. And you have to choose the point that you've been given. It is your decision. Which point do you think is the first one? And which point do you think is the second one? And after thinking that one, you label. This is x1 and this is x2. This is y1 and this is y2. Then y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that is equal to slope. Now, determine the gradient of the slope is not an issue again. It is something you need to understand. Because by definition, gradient or slope is the length of the change in y to the change in e x. That is definitely possible you can do it. Now, that's over about the slope.